This is the fastest way to warm up your aim. We're gonna do all of this in the firing range because I'm not gonna shoot bots in a custom game because it takes way too long to set up. And I'm also not gonna load into a real game because Call of Duty uses engagement optimized matchmaking, which means your first game on is usually one of the easiest lobbies that you'll get all day. So we don't wanna waste it warming up. Now on the range, I like to set the bots to three plates and I personally turn aim assist off. This is a bit more advanced, so if that's too hard for you, you can definitely keep it on. Okay, let's start the warm up. For the first 15 seconds, I simply rotate my thumb around in circles in both directions. I'm just trying to loosen up my thumb and go through the full range of motion of the analog stick. I also move it up and down and side to side as well to help get warmed up. And then for the next 30 seconds, I pick one of the dummies as a target and I simply strafe back and forth while trying to keep my crosshair centered on the target. This helps me warm up the fine motor skills in my thumb and gets me used to making small micro adjustments as I move around. Crosshair placement and centering your aim in Call of Duty is extremely important because the time to kill is really low, and it can often be the difference between winning and losing gunfights in the game. So being able to make small adjustments to your crosshair as you're moving around the map is really important and this helps me get warmed up for that. Now this next exercise is probably the hardest in the warm up and what I do is I just move my crosshair back and forth between two different dummies. In a real game, you're oftentimes going to find yourself in situations where you know an opponent is near you but you don't know where they're going to challenge you. Say for instance if you're looking at a building, they might challenge you from the doorway or from the window and you want to be able to accurately put your crosshair in each one of those locations anticipating that they might be there. And this can be rather difficult because you won't have any aim assist when there's no one there. So this drill helps me get warmed up for situations like that. Now if you look at this line in the firing range, as soon as you cross it, the dummies start to move. So for this next exercise, I like to warm up my tracking by ADSing at the first dummy and then walking past the line and then tracking the dummy as he moves back and forth. Doing this over and over again for about a minute helps me smooth out my aim as I move my analog stick left and right. It's really important to have smooth aim in an FPS game because you always want to be in complete control. If you have a lot of jerky motions in your aim, you won't be able to make those fine micro adjustments needed in gunfights. This was something I struggled with a lot when I first started trying to improve my aim in Call of Duty, because when you're playing with aim assist, it oftentimes covers up a lot of the inaccuracies that you have in your thumb. And if you never work on smoothing out your aim, you'll never reach your max potential. And this is a big reason why I like to train with aim assist off in a lot of cases, because it really helps me develop the fine motor skills in my thumb to help me aim at a very high level. Not to mention, when you do finally turn aim assist back on, it literally feels like aimbot because of how strong it is in this game. Okay, and for this next exercise, I finally start to shoot my gun. And what I like to do is I like to grab one of my loadout guns that has a large magazine, and I simply fire the gun down range, and I just try to control the recoil the best that I can. I'm not really aiming at any of the targets, I'm just trying to see as little movement as possible in the barrel of my gun. I also don't just always fire the entire magazine at one time, I oftentimes like to shoot the gun in bursts because the recoil pattern for the first couple of seconds when you fire is gonna usually be a little bit different compared to the sustained recoil fire after a couple of seconds. So I like to practice this initial burst because if I can handle the recoil for the first second or so and stay on target, I'm usually gonna hit enough shots to down my opponent. Also, I'm not sure if this is true for every gun, but it does seem like the first second or so of recoil is usually the hardest to control, and then the recoil starts to even out over time, so it kind of makes sense to practice the first part more. Recoil control is such a fundamental skill to aiming that even though it's pretty basic, I like to spend quite a bit of time working on it every day. Okay, and for the next exercise, I switch my aim back and forth between the different dummies as fast as possible. I'm not looking to down the dummy each time, I just want to get a couple of bullets into them to make sure that I'm on target. I practice switching between the targets while holding my ADS and also while letting go of it. I play with a .85 ADS multiplier, so depending on the situation, sometimes it's faster to let go of my ADS button as I move from one target to the other, so I just want to practice both ways. And what this exercise does is it helps me get warmed up for fighting multiple opponents since I like to play solo versus squads. And because I try to switch between the targets really quickly, it also helps me get warmed up for playing at game speed. One of the major things that separates good players from average players in Call of Duty is the pacing and speed at which they play. To get high kill games, you have to be playing the game really quickly and getting into a lot of engagements, which more often than not means fighting more than one person at a time. So this drill not only helps me warm up my aim, but also helps me get mentally prepared for how fast I need to play the game. And now for this next drill, I spend a minute working on my 90 degree turns. Oftentimes when you're playing the game, you're going to get surprised by someone shooting you in the side. So you have to be able to turn quickly and get on target and then hit your shots. 
So for this drill, I face the side wall of the firing range and I turn as fast as I can and then shoot one of the dummies. I like to change my position from the wall so that I'm not always turning the exact same angle to shoot the dummies, which gives me a little bit of variation and makes this drill a little bit harder. I also make sure to practice turning to the left and to the right because I wanna be warmed up in both directions because I don't know where I'm gonna be shot at when I get into an actual game. This warm up drill is quite a bit harder than the previous one because I don't see my target when I start my turn. But this is where muscle memory comes into play because I've done this drill and other drills like it so many times that I know roughly what it takes to turn 90 degrees on my thumbstick. And that's why sometimes when you shoot a good player in the side and they're still able to kill you, it's because their reflexes and muscle memory just take over and they're able to hit their shots without even thinking. Now, similar to the last exercise, I then practiced my 180s for one minute. I practiced turning both to the left and to the right, and this helps me simulate situations where I'm getting shot in the back during a game. I try to spin around as fast as possible, and I change up which dummy that I'm shooting at. Once again, a lot of this drill comes down to muscle memory, so if you're finding this really hard, I would suggest getting into a custom game and just practicing your 180s. Oh, and I should mention that this is my fast warm-up routine for when I'm short on time to play. I'm a dad now, so I don't always have a whole lot of time, and I like to be as efficient as possible. So that's why I created this routine for myself to warm up as quickly as I can. But obviously there are some limitations to just warming up in the firing range. So if you'd like to see a full warm-up guide with shooting bots in a custom game, make sure to comment down below. Also, if you'd like to see me play live, you can check out my Twitch link down in the description below. And if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one training, make sure to have your notifications turned on because I'm gonna be opening up a small number of slots each week for people who are interested, and I'll be announcing it soon on my community page. Okay, these next two drills are all about warming up my vertical aim. To start, I point my crosshair at one of the numbers on the ground, and then I quickly shoot at one of the dummies. This simulates the aiming motion of standing on a building and looking down below, and then challenging someone on the roof with me. The important thing here is that I wanna be able to see the dummies while I'm aiming at the ground. My whole philosophy for warming up my aim is that I wanna practice all the different aiming motions that I'm gonna use in a game. And with how many buildings there are in Warzone, making sure my vertical aim is warmed up is really important. And just like before, I'm working on both my accuracy and speed with this drill. And then after about 30 seconds, I start to point my aim at one of the vents in the ceiling, and then I repeat the drill. This simulates the aiming motion of looking at someone parachuting in from the sky, and then shooting someone on the ground with me. One thing to note is that because of how much space your gun takes up on your screen, I find that it's easier to keep the dummies in my field of view if I stand closer to the back wall. And just like before, I do like to move around to provide some variation to the exercise so that I'm practicing all the different aiming motions. Now this next exercise takes the difficulty up a notch. Instead of having the dummies in my field of view, I purposefully position my character and my aim so that I can't see them. This makes the drill a lot harder because I have to move my aim to where I think the dummies are then I have to make some micro adjustments to my crosshair once I'm close to the target. I also like to add some variation to the drill by turning my character away from the dummies, which means that I have to move my aim further to get to them. Once again, my philosophy for this whole warm up guide is just to practice all the different aiming motions that I might encounter in a game so that I feel warmed up for every type of scenario. This drill is actually one of my favorites because it's pretty difficult and I think that having good vertical aim is extremely underrated in Call of Duty because most people grew up playing multiplayer and your vertical aim on those small maps isn't as important because the buildings aren't nearly as tall as what you find in Warzone. So a lot of players don't have great vertical aim and you can really separate yourself from those players if you work on it. Not to mention, you can always get a lot of free kills with people parachuting in if you're good at it. Okay, this next drill helps me prepare for the early game in Warzone. First, I turn my aim assist back on, and then for two minutes, I switch back and forth between a couple of pre-made classes that have common ground loot guns, and also common starting pistols. I used to be terrible with ground loot guns a few years ago, until I realized that I needed to warm up and practice with them. Almost everyone can hit their shots with their loadout gun, but getting good with the ground loot guns is essential to get more kills. I also like to start really warming up my movement during this drill, so I practice slide canceling back and forth, and I do 360 jumps, just to try to get focused and prepared for fast paced gameplay. Over the years, I've found that warming up for me is not just about getting my hands loosened up, it's also about getting in the right mental space to play the game at a high level. Now, typically during those first couple of drills, I'll have noticed that maybe something needs a little bit more work for warming up, whether it's my recoil or my target switching. So I like to work on that a little bit more during this last drill when I'm using the ground loot guns and also when I'm using aim assist. Because even though I like turning off aim assist to warm up, there's no denying that it's extremely powerful in this game and probably is too overpowered. And it does make a big difference to the feel of your aim when you have it on. I would love for them to nerf it quite a bit, especially the rotational aspect of it. 
is I think it would make the game have a lot more skill gap and be better balanced. And I think it could be nerfed quite a bit and still allow for controller players to compete with mouse and keyboard players. And speaking of that, I've seen lots of comments over the years about people wanting tips for keyboard players. And I wanted to let you guys know that I've been grinding MNK for the last few months and I'm planning to start incorporating both inputs into my videos later this year. I've been enjoying the challenge a lot. And one thing that I will say is that I do think a lot of the aim principles carry over between both inputs. And I do think that a lot of the aim exercises that I've shown for controller over the years also work pretty well for mouse and keyboard. But getting back to the warm up, once I've done about two minutes of shooting with the ground loot guns and worked on my accuracy with the pistols, I'm usually feeling pretty good by this point. But one thing you guys might've noticed is that I haven't warmed up very much with my close range loadout gun. So the last thing that I do to save a little bit of time is that I hop out of the firing range and I go to whatever game mode that I'm gonna play that day and I queue up. And while I'm waiting to connect to a match, I just go back to the range and I repeat the last exercise with my loadout. Now having good aim in Warzone is great, but you also need to have good movement to get high kill games. And if you wanna see exactly how to improve your movement, you can check out this video right here.